Okay, we, let's move on to uh, hands-on se session. Uh, so I think in box, if in box folder, I'm not sure if you already download all of them. And this is uh, uh, the folder, and uh, there is some file there. Um, <coughs> I think, yeah, this one I just put it there because it's already in the raw data side because, you know, we have, the, you know, some setting working directory, you know, how to find it. So I just, for easy, I just re-put it however it may take time to download. You really don't have to download this, you know. If you, you, can, you can drag it from raw data to here. You really don't have to download. Um, but this, basically, this is uh, all the files, and this is the R file. We're going to open it uh, in R Studio, kind of go through that. And this HTML kind of like ran through all the codes, all the plots there, kind of like give you, you know, if you have trouble, you know, <coughs> running, you know, you can see the result there the, with the plot kind of running through the R code here. Um, so here, um, if you open our studio and find that file. And it's the first thing you want to, you know, I think you already learned for a lot of time, the most important, you want to set the working directory properly, you know. So if you get a working directory, so there is, you know, at this directory, here's the files. So if you have all of that, this file, that means you can see them, that means you are in the right place. Otherwise, you have to go, you know, um, you know go to, you know, here, station, a working directory, or either you can set it to source file. If you open it from that file, or still you can just directly go there, or you can just have to choose the directory where you save it, right? Uh, <clears throat> and also, you can you can you can you can do it from here, and if you. Click on here. You you find your your folder and you can set it as working directory. So that means it will set this. Uh, so this is the path of your uh, working directory. So if you tap this directory, you will see all the file names. So after you have that, and and we can run through the uh, the coding out go uh, kind of like in chunks here. So first we'll load some of the R libraries we need. Uh, Okay, so after that, we will load a couple R data set. This is the, uh, the TCGA uh, gene patient data we used before. And this clustering, this is, clustering group is really from Kevin's four groups, right? You remember the right, purple, blue, and green, those four groups there. So I use the same um, group I want to look at, you know, maybe we'll look at the, uh, the differentially paired genes between the two groups and and can they really, you know, can really, can they predict survival? So that's, so we're going to use, um, use that grouping uh, to, to kind of develop a gene list to, to, for predicting survivals. So after we're getting the, we are loading the BRCA data, uh, so, so, log, so this is already logged in, in that our data set. So we want to, you know, we want to extract the survival, so we make the, for, Analysis later on, we, we build a new data set. We call it a data, a, a, a new data set. So if you run this, so we are building a new data set. So if you here, if you tap structure as this function data, so you can kind of see. Um, There's no cursor there. So, so this data has you know a few attributes. You know what we what we did here. You know you can access by dollar sign. You know so and also we match the gene gene IDs with with clinical uh, survival. So, so we are trying to match the the ID maybe so that we can directly use it. Uh, so after we, uh, we build the data side and we will do the survival analysis. Uh, so first thing we want to look at, um, 
So for the four groups, if we uh, for the four groups, if we do the um, Kaplan Meyer curve, how do they look like? So here are the four groups uh, with the same with, with the similar colors uh, from the classing groups. We want to see if we have the overall survival time, how they look like. So these two groups could be, you know, uh, those ER positive. Uh, this could be HER2, and this is or negative. So that's how the data uh, shows here by looking at the overall. So, you know, maybe if we use progression free survival, there could be a different thing. Uh, <clears throat> however, this is, you know, over, you know, you know, this is in months, right? This is, you know, you never know that this, you know, is too long, it's, it may not be due to cancer or some other things. So maybe at the beginning, you know, <clears throat> however, there's, there's not much that different at the beginning, right? Um, uh, the first few years. Um, okay. So, and then we pick uh, two groups, the the blue and uh, and the and the purple, the group two and the four, and we want to you know get a differentially expressed genes, and then we use that gene for survival prediction. See if we really can, if we have the separation here, can we use the differentially expressed gene between the group? Can they really separate the patients? Uh, let, like this, and when we do predictions. So, so here is we do t-test between the group two and the four uh, by using Kevin's multiple t-test uh, function. Okay. Okay. And here we are getting the gene list uh, by, by, by that t-test and you can kind of see how many genes there. There are 339 genes um, by uh, looking at the group two and the group four difference. We're going to use these 339 genes uh, for survival modeling. And here is some, some set seating and set up. Uh, and then we split the data into you know, two thirds and one third. And after that, we will run unique, very Cox model, right? Um, on, the, on the training side. Let me just take a few seconds. Uh, okay. So we can get a histogram of the p-value, what p-value look like. You know, seems that there are not a lot of genes are differentially, not really have a, you know, smaller p-value, that means there are, there are some genes associated with survival, but not a lot compared to the, you know, the, the group difference. However, you know, um, I think there's, you know, there's some genes with small p that means there's some relationship between gene patient with survival. So, and, and to demonstrate that, that's why we just picked the top 50 genes uh, to run the um, stepwise selection. So here are the uh, stepwise. You know, we use backward with uh, 50 genes. Um, so you will, you will, each time you will drop one and kind of going, going through this, make this smaller until it, it reaches the minimum. Uh, it will stop. Uh, Okay, so if we plot the steps, uh, so this is the AIC, so we see each time it drop one and kind of reduce. Uh, and, and by using the genes, we have, we can do our predictions. So here are the, the, the prediction scores. So, so we, we get a vector for each patient. We have a score. There's a range of the score from minus 3.9 to 3.58 for, for the training. And also the same for the test set. So by building the model, you know, with the gene we selected, we can predict, you know, there's a you know, risk scores associated with each patient. Uh, and then later on, we use these scores to calculate AUC and you know, how consistent they are. The score really consistent with the time they survive. So uh, we'll look at that later. And so we get 
prediction scoffer for each matter. And then the next will be we're looking at cross validation. We're looking at cross validation likelihood. So by by adding one variable at a time, starting with the most significant ones, and, and here like among uh, twelve genes selected, uh, and then we do the same thing for um, prediction. Uh, So after we get that, we, we, we uh, run a penalized method. Um, so here's some function I defined. So, so I pre-saved some of the, uh, the result here because it takes a long time to run this. Uh, no, there are 6,000 genes to run it. So, um, so I kind of pre-saved the result, and we don't have to run it. Uh, so here's some plot by looking at um, different uh, you know, there are for top 50 genes for using Lasoma, there um, you kind of see what the you know coefficient pass, and this is for elastic night. Uh, this is for uh, rich regression, and this is using top 50 genes. This is using uh, p value less than 0.2. Uh, so something really similar uh, plot. I just want to. Put them all there. Um, so reach regression is just uh, all the same. Uh, yeah. Okay. So um, and then we can um, plot the risk scores, right? So. After we have get a prediction from each matter, we can predict, you know, for each of the four groups, what the prediction score are they consistent with the survival curve we, we get at the beginning, right? So this is, you know, by different methods here. Uh, this is this using a stepwise AIC. You know, they are pretty much similar, and you can see you kind of see um, there there's some difference. There's a high risk for this group. I mean, survival is worse. Um, this is similar. Uh, the now is uh, elective nine and the rich regression. You remember the rich regression gave us better AUCs. Um, so, so this is just uh, one split. Uh, so, we, so is so if we try different um, matter here. Uh, it's, I think most of them are consistent. You know, this this group is doing the worst. Uh, okay, yeah. So the next one, next uh, we will calculate the AUC uh, by using this uh, function. So we first look at uh, okay. So who knows AUC? So. Here's the AUC just based on one split, you know, AUC. So the um, rich regression with top 50 gives us the highest. Uh, so, and then we move on to other AUCs and see how they look like. So this time it's similar. So, so this Uno cystic uh, give us. Uh, a better con concordance, but others are uh, kind of lower around 6.67. So, you know, um, so this is really higher, you know. It, you know, it could be uh, how, they, how they define it. Um, so here, the reach regression has the highest. And however, for the others, it's, it's not always the case, you know. Seems the regression with top 50 is better. Uh, I think here, I think here we have the code to demonstrate how you can calculate these kind of things uh, uh, by using the real data. Um, so see if you have any questions uh, to, to go through this, and you can ask me now, or I can later on walk around and see if you have questions on specific on any of the of these codes.
Yeah. I have a question about the data. Uh huh. It looks like the HER2 positives have the worst overall survival in this case. Right. Do we know how many of these samples are old enough that they would have been more receptive with the appropriate treatment for HER2 positives? Because historically, that was the worst performing. Yeah. Group. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So I don't know what from the clinical data if we have the Herceptin treatment information, right? We want to. I, I don't know. Right. <coughs> so do do you know when the Herceptin treatment started? Like long time ago or recent? Uh-huh. Yeah, right. Cases. Right. So I don't know if there's a record of when the actual samples were collected. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I think you, yeah, if you have that information, the treatment information, we can we can look at, I think. Here we just don't use any of the treatment information. It could be treated differently patient, you know. It, it may not be due to, you know, their biology. It could be other things in a mixture. Um, I think you should always be aware of this, you know, there could be multiple things going on at the same time that from your data. Uh, yeah, I think I can walk around, you know, if you have a question, but if not, you know, you are free. Uh,